Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Gabriel India Limited Q4 and FI22 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the future guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Kolatkar, Managing Director of Gabriel India Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good morning and a very warm welcome to everybody who's joined the call. Uh, uh, I'm Manoj Kolatkar. Uh, joining me today is Rishi, uh, our group, our uh, company CFO, and Nilesh Jain, our company secretary, and of course SGA, our investor relations advisors. Uh, so we have uploaded our results and investor presentation for the quarter and the year ended uh, on the stock exchange uh, yesterday after we had our board meeting. Hope each one of you had a chance to go through the same. Uh, so before uh, I get into the numbers uh, and uh, run you through the presentation, uh, we'll just give a brief on you know, the overall uh, outlook of the industry and where are we. Uh, of course, most of you are aware of all the challenges that are you know, continuing to uh, kind of hit the industry for several quarters now. Uh, but nevertheless, I'll just dwell upon, you know, this is uh, mainly my perspective. Uh, so coming to the industry, uh, I mean, last year, I mean, I'm talking of 21-22. Uh, when I refer to last year, it'll be 21-22. Uh, you know, the, the the industry was a mixed bag. Uh, yes, I mean, all all the results we we will compare with 2021, which was actually not the right year to compare because it was the COVID year. Uh, nevertheless, 21-22 for passenger cars, uh, I mean, it was a good year in terms of uh, you know domestic sales. Uh, there was uh, there was an increase uh, compared to 20. 2021 and in fact the good part is in passenger cars there was an increase compared to even 1920 uh, on the domestic sales figures uh, so if you see the total domestic exports there was almost a 17 percent uh, increase uh, compared to 2021 uh, of course the industry was faced with a lot of challenges mainly you know the semiconductor shortages uh, these numbers could have been more as we all know, there's a huge waiting list for any car that you want to buy from the market, uh, which holds, uh, you know, which which is uh, a good thing because that clearly signals a robust demand pipeline for the passenger cars. However, coming to two wheelers, uh, the story is, you know, uh, different and uh, unfortunately it continues to be under severe stress uh, for, you know, uh, for several years now. Uh, the two wheelers, two wheeler volumes are actually down by three percent uh, if you take uh, domestic and export uh, both put together. Uh, but you, if you look at uh, only domestic, in fact, uh, the figures are even more adverse. Uh, it is almost down by nine percent compared to last year. Uh, exports did very well. Uh, you know that I mean, basically, Bajaj and TVS continued to export uh, very good volumes uh, all through the uh, last year. So that helped us as well. Uh, I mean, the reasons for two-wheelers, of course, is first and foremost is the COVID second wave, which hit in April, June. Uh, it almost, you know, kind of devastated the, the rural segment. Uh, that that really shook their confidence. And then immediately, uh, you know, if there were any signs of revival, it was again uh, hit by the Omicron wave. So there's a lot of uncertainty in, in the minds of the people. Adding to this, uh, yes, of course, there is the EV uh, so that's mainly on the met metro side, I would say, uh, that people are waiting for the EV uh, EV thing to pan out. So it's uh, to some extent wait and watch. And of course, the demand is also low because, you know, many are still operating from home. Uh, the schools are still not entirely operating. So, you know, obviously this affects the uh, schools and colleges. So this, this affects, uh, you know, two-wheeler and three-wheeler demand both. So it's a... It's you know still uh, I mean say I must say challenging days for two wheelers uh, and it, it it is of course oh, I mean it might last though of course we we did hear from uh, 
the largest player in the country, Hero Motor Corp, that uh, you know uh, they are optimistic about a revival as far as the two wheeler is concerned after this monsoon. Uh, commercial vehicle was, of course, a, a very good recovery. Uh, I mean, commercial vehicle volumes grew by almost 30 percent. Uh, so the and and the trend continues uh, into the year. Uh, this this we we expect to continue the same same growth rate. You know, maybe about 20 percent in the year. 22-23 as well. Uh, tractors, of course, Gabriel does not play in this segment, uh, but yeah, tractors, uh, there was again a, a drop of 1%. Uh, of course, we had a, a, an excellent sale in the month of, in the year of 2021, but then last year was a little correction to that. Uh, ICRA's recent survey on auto dealership to understand current demand and supply trends across various segments uh, indicated that demand may remain weaker than last year. Uh, but we'll again, as I said, we'll have to wait and watch. There are supply challenges which continue. You know, adding to the semiconductors was this, uh, uh, you know, the, the Ukraine war. Uh, so that has even, you know, further uh, aggravated the situation. And of course, the rising commodity prices also uh, have, have, have played to it. Uh, yes, I mean, of course, all of us are yet to see the impact of, you know, the recent. Uh, Government intervention on the steel prices uh, just a couple of days back. It's uh, it's early days, but hopefully that should uh, that should see a change in the commodity trend for the main commodity, which is steel, for all of us. Uh, during the last quarter, the demand for PV, as I said, uh, you know, remained very very healthy. Uh, so you know, uh, this this as I said, we are very very optimistic about the passenger car particularly. Coming to electric vehicles, uh, they are becoming uh, more and more visible, and the usage is increasing across all segments. So the two-wheeler story, we all know. I mean, in the month of Jan, Feb, March, we had uh, you know uh, sales of 50,000 in a month, which is you know if you see the entire last year, the growth uh, for EV has been almost uh, you know uh, uh, for two-wheelers has almost been 400 uh, percent. Even this, I mean, uh, if you take the full year. Uh, for last year in terms of registered vehicles. I'm not talking about unregistered. Unregistered is a similar 50-50 market. Uh, there is a, uh, last year, 21-22, we sold about 231,000 uh, two-wheelers, and now the hit rate per month is almost 50,000. So you can see uh, you know, clearly in 22-23, very likely that this figure might actually go close to a million mark as well, uh, I mean, if all things go well. Uh, the way uh, each uh, EV maker is indicating their schedules, uh, we are quite hopeful that this this should see you know a continued you know huge growth uh, in in uh, two wheeler segment, especially the scooters of course. Passenger cars uh, still are a very small number, but nevertheless catching uh, catching a lot of uh, traction. Uh, Tata Motors Nexon is selling almost 3,000 a month. Uh, MG has come up with a new model. Uh, that is also doing well, uh, and there are other players as well getting into the fray. Plus, there are lots of announcements from you know Mahindra now, uh, where, uh, where they'll be launch, they'll be introducing the concept uh, you know uh, sometime in 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 the second quarter uh, on their uh, born electric vehicles as they say. I mean clean sheet electric vehicle platform. So a lot of action that is bound to happen in passenger car space as well. Three wheelers. Uh, I mean, yes, of course, the adoption there has been has been the highest, uh, and the conversion will be the highest. So easily we can see more and more three wheelers uh, getting converted to uh, EVs. So this is, uh, in short, you know, uh, just what what the industry uh, did look like last year, and of course, uh, also to some extent, uh, I did uh, indicate as to how it will pan out. In this year as well, in terms of 22-23. Uh, so now uh, moving uh, moving to the numbers, uh, I'll take you through the slides uh, quickly. I mean, uh, if you, I mean, we we of course have to start with the COVID because COVID, while we say it is behind us, uh, we all hope it is behind us. But there is again a prediction of a fourth wave. Uh, hopefully, it will be mild and people are uh, going for the third shot, a booster shot. We. In our group, also have decided to extend the booster shot to employees. Uh, so hopefully, I mean, we, we should not should not see any adverse impact of uh, 
COVID. Nevertheless, just to mention that our precautions continue. Uh, we being a very, uh, uh, I mean, a conscious company and a group, we continue to take all the precautions uh, as regards COVID appropriate behavior. Uh, now moving on, uh, in terms of the results, we had uh, an excellent quarter in Q4, the best ever actually. Uh, so we did the sale of 684 crore, which is uh, you know highest by a long margin. Yes, this does have a, the commodity impact uh, uh, to uh, to, uh, to some extent. But even if you discount that, it still has been the best sales as regards uh, you know uh, Gabriel, uh, the best quarter uh, ever. Uh, and in terms of EBITDA, we did uh, 37 crores, which is five and a half percent. Yes, we had, we had, we continue to have challenges in the commodity. Uh, that is not just not easing. Uh, you, we all know the steel price hike that happened in March and April uh, was really something unforeseen. Uh, I mean, none of the industry expected that to happen. Uh, so yes, the government intervention was uh, actually uh, imminent. Uh, which, which thankfully has happened. So we'll have to see the, as I said, we'll have to see the impact. Uh, but in terms of PVT, we have been able to maintain uh, five and a half percent, which is 37 crores uh, for the quarter. Uh, going to the slide eight, uh, just the highlights. Revenue for the year, again, the highest sale year uh, ever, uh, 2,332 crores, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, compared to last year, of course, it was a COVID year, uh, the growth is almost 38%. EBITDA uh, for the full year is 6.3%. Uh, so again, if you see the growth over FY21, uh, it is 42.3%. Uh, yes, I have to again mention that this year, I mean, in 21-22, in uh, in we had a month of COVID impact, uh, actually almost two months of COVID impact in, in the month of May and to some extent in June as well. So it was not, uh, you know, the year was not completely, I must say, free from COVID. Uh, but yes, uh, despite that, I think the company did manage uh, really uh, good sales uh, for the year. Uh, PBT was 126 crores, uh, which is 5.4%. Uh, again, a growth of 62.3% compared to FY21. Uh, balance sheet net cash position of almost 280 crores. Uh, cash flow from operations uh, to the tune of 96 crores compared to, of course, the higher inflow last year of 204 crores. Uh, in the year, we incurred capex of almost 67 crores. Uh, going to slide nine, uh, these are again the same numbers. Uh, I'm not uh, spending that. I'll move to slide ten, giving the trend. Uh, yes, uh, the EBITDA trends uh, have been under pressure, uh, mainly while we have got the raw material compensation from the customers. Uh, you know the the in Impact uh, because it has happened. This increase has, you know, happened quarter after quarter after quarter uh, with no uh, abatement in sight. Uh, obviously, this plays, uh, you know, even on a simple arithmetic. Even even if we get a hundred percent compensation, there is an impact on the uh, margins. Uh, coming to, I mean, this uh, slide twelve is again the trend. So if you see on the full year basis, uh, uh, EBITDA has, I mean started moving up, uh, EBITDA, PAT, and uh, uh, ROC both have started moving up from, you know, the downtrend in the last uh, last year, 2021. Uh, the net working capital days also has reduced to 17 days. Uh, the rest are the key ratios. I'll just spend maybe on the slide 14, which is the segment mix. Uh, so yes, I mean, the passenger car sales uh, uh, did quite well last year. Uh, and even CV, as I said, has started uh, you know, uh, doing very good volumes. So you'll see a shift to, to that extent uh, slightly. Uh, in terms of aftermarket, uh, we, we have 12%. Exports, uh, of course, was a, was a good year for exports. We crossed 100 crore of exports in the year. Uh, but yes, unfortunately, uh, I must also say that we have been hit by the Russia war because part of our exports was to Volkswagen of Russia. So we'll have to wait uh, till those volumes start back. Uh, coming to the next slide, uh, which is on two-wheelers, three-wheelers, uh, which is 66% of our sale. Our market share continues to be 25%. Our engagement with uh, all OEMs remains as strong as it was. Uh, we continue to get uh, you know, awards. We got an award from, uh, Hindu, uh, from uh, Honda Motorcycles for uh, new product development, which is a very, very key uh, category of awards. Uh, especially being a global uh, a global company.
company and uh, the world leader in uh, two wheelers. Uh, so that's a very prestigious award that we have got. We also got an award from TVS Motors uh, for quality, cost, and delivery. Uh, so we, we have, you know, in fact, strengthened our relationships based on uh, solid, uh, you know, performance of, of uh, the products and the programs that the OEMs have asked from us. Uh, coming to the passenger car, uh, you know, many of the programs that we had started have started, uh, you know, uh, getting to SOP. Some, in fact, many of them are due to the new program which you can see here on slide number 16, uh, Maruti Suzuki, y, code name Y0M, YWD, and YSG. All these programs are going to start in this year, uh, uh, some, some in August, some in December. So this will add to the volumes further. Uh, the Stellantis or the PSA, Peugeot Citro, has already started. Volumes are very low. Uh, but uh, the important thing is this is a global company uh, which is looking at sourcing opportunities from India. So we are very uh, strongly engaged with them. They have been very, uh, very satisfied with, you know, all the work that we have done so far. Uh, and, uh, I mean, there has been a very good engagement at all levels as far as Stellantis is concerned. Uh, coming to commercial vehicles, uh, yes, uh, I think uh, we all know we, we have a huge market share here, so uh, you know we continue to uh, continue to have that confidence from the OEMs. Uh, our export program DAF, uh, you know, we have got two more programs. Uh, we had started DAF export last year. We won the award for the best new supplier, uh, so this is a global award uh, from DAF of Netherlands. And in addition, just a couple of weeks back. We won the PAKAR. PAKAR is a, uh, the group, holding group of uh, DAF. Uh, so from PAKAR, we got the 10 PPM award, uh, which is awarded to only select suppliers globally. Uh, so we got that award as well. So the engagement with DAF is again very strong. We have already been extended uh, for the DAF Brazil uh, products as well. So that is an addition that has happened last year. Volumes are small, but it, the good part is uh, you know, their confidence in us is growing. Uh, aftermarket uh, was, uh, I mean, a terrific year last year. Uh, we did excellent sales of 331 crores, uh, again, the highest ever, of course. Uh, I mean, that, and that growth story continues, so we, we, uh, we expect to build on this uh, further going forward. Exports, I already mentioned, this is slide number 19 shows the exports. Yes, there is a setback, which is temporary. Uh, Volkswagen is also working out uh, alternatives to, you know, to this production in Russia. So, but we'll have to wait and watch for some time. Uh, balance sheet, uh, again, uh, uh, CapEx for, I'll just mention the CapEx. We did, uh, as I said, 68 crores for uh, the last year. And uh, the main CapEx was the tech center. We have inaugurated, I mean, we have started our new tech center, uh, four-wheeler tech center. It is a, I mean, a really beautiful building, and also uh, we have our own small test track for noise, uh, noise testing alongside the tech center, and we have all the latest equipment uh, with, you know, uh, provisioning for uh, additional seats in terms of engineering uh, design. Uh, we also expanded in our casting plant to reduce our uh, dependence on China. Uh, so that uh, that has all already happened. I mean, the tonnage has almost gone double uh, as far as our uh, casting capacity is concerned. It's almost close to 300 tons uh, a month now. Uh, in Deva's plant, uh, we are expanding to have a new paint line uh, to improve the quality and, of course, to improve productivity and efficiency of the whole paint line. So these are the key capex for uh, 22, uh, I mean, 20, year 21-22. Uh, and these are, uh, you know, uh, the cash flows, uh, et cetera, so I'll not spend time on this, but uh, I'd rather, rather you know, uh, leave the floor open uh, for questions from you. Uh, just one point that, uh, of course, the dividend, uh, yesterday we declared a final dividend of one rupee, in addition to the already declared 0.55 or 55 pesa, so the total dividend stands at one rupee 55 pesa per share. Uh, so now uh, I would, I would actually uh, leave it open to, uh, you know, questions and keen to hear uh, your queries, your clarifications, your suggestions. Uh. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question may enter star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Viraj from Securities Investment Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for good set of numbers in such a challenging environment. Uh, just a couple of questions. First is, you know, uh, so in this 24, we kind of, you know, mentioned about our performance in all end segments. So if we can just provide, you know, how much of this come has come, growth has come from existing customers as against new ones. And uh, really the question is in terms of share of EV sales, how much would that be, say, in Q4 or FI? Uh, 22 and how should we see this scaling up in coming here? So that is one. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Viraj. Uh, so yes, our uh, our share with existing customers, uh, you know, with some of the customers is actually increasing. Uh, with uh, for sure with uh, you know uh, Royal Enfield, with uh, TVS, with Maruti Suzuki, uh, with Tata Motors. Uh, I can say, I mean, uh, top of the mind, this, and, and yes, of course, the Honda motorcycles, because we, as I mentioned last year, we won the new uh, new motorcycle uh, uh, award from Honda motorcycles. Those numbers are yet to come, but uh, that will further increase our SOB with uh, HMSI. Uh, now, talking about electric, where, you know, uh, we already have, a, uh, you know, over 50% market share, you know, so that that has been a very solid story. So we are engaged, as you know, till till now we are engaged with Ola, Ampere, Aether, TVS, and of course Ola. Uh, Ola has started doing good numbers now. Uh, in fact, just a, a couple of days back, I I did meet uh, Mr. Bhavish Agrawal. So I mean, and they have expressed uh, you know so, uh, great satisfaction on the partnership that we have extended to them in terms of you know supplying uh, the parts. Uh, so Ola volumes are doing well. Uh, so this this share of business in EV will only increase as Ola volumes go higher and higher. Now, the only uh, player that we did not have in the EV, uh, two-wheeler EV segment was Hero Electric, which is the market leader, as you know. So I'm glad to share that we have won the LOI from Hero Electric for a new model, which, which uh, will start, the SOP should start in Q2 of this year, uh, Q2 or uh, early Q3. Uh, this is a model where the volumes that they have indicated in year 26-27, we are likely to go to a million. So this is this is a huge order. I mean, uh, the order size itself is over, uh, you know, 250 crores. Uh, so this is, you know, one very good development. So we now have in terms of two wheelers where you know the conversion ha is happening extremely fast. Uh, in fact, there are some cities where the the penetration of EVs is already hit 17%. In, in 2022, you know, which is real, really uh, very encouraging. In fact, the, you know, what they said was the penetration will go to 20% by 2025 was the general prediction. We are seeing 17% uh, penetration already in a couple of cities in, uh, in India. So now with this addition of Hero, our uh, entrenchment in EV two-wheelers becomes even more stronger. Uh, with Ola volumes going up, this 50% will immediately see a increase to maybe 55 percent 60 percent so yeah the EV two-wheeler story is is really uh, quite strong and uh, this 250 crore order which you say uh, from you know, electric uh, that is over what life cycle or that's the annual volume we are talking about uh, that's uh, that's the annual volume I'm talking about I'm talking about peak peak annual volume uh, as per the numbers they have indicated yes you know the numbers I mean obviously we we have to uh, we don't know how the vehicle perform in the market, but uh, just going truly by purely by the numbers they indicated, that is a, that is the volume size. So if you see the program life, it will be much more. Okay, so this will be a couple of models, right? Not just one model. Uh, no, this is just one model. Okay. Second question is, you know, uh, on the margin front, you know, you mentioned that um, on the RM, you know, we got price increases, but. Is is the large part of the inflation now in the books, or we expect any further, uh, you know, cost inflation? And related to that, you know, how should we understand margins moving for us in 23? I mean, have we got any further price increase? Because the mix has been quite favorable, and based on the indication, the mix will be even more favorable in 23, especially with CV aftermarket and then PV coming up for us. 
Viraj uh, sorry your voice is a little i mean not not entirely clear but anyway i'm just i'll try to answer that uh, i hope i got what you're asking in terms of uh, our rm compensation uh, raw material compensation we get almost uh, i would say 95% uh, back to back with oems i mean so if you look at basically it's steel aluminum rubber and oil i mean these are the key components that go in a in in a, a shock absorber or a front strut or a front fork uh, so uh, we get uh, from all oems back to back arrangement yes maybe it's with a lag uh, it depends as i said 3 months or 6 months uh, but we are we are moving everybody to a 3 month cycle now uh, mainly uh, the commercial vehicle is a longer cycle but uh, let's say two wheeler and passenger car which is a much higher volume uh, game uh, there we have a back to back arrangement so we have been able to do that uh, yes i mean there have been other increases so mainly as you know increases in uh, freight uh, increases in packaging increases in every every commodity that we speak uh, currently some some which are not direct material so they do not get covered so we are now i mean of course uh, you know uh, have been requesting oems to support on that front as well uh, yes hopefully something of that should materialize in 2223 uh so so yes i mean we see we we are pushing this very hard uh, we have taken a focused effort and a focused exercise in the company uh, to to get compensation beyond raw material compensation okay just one more question if i can squeeze in uh, uh, you know, yeah one point if you're on a speaker mode switch to handset and speak please yeah is it better now yeah yeah which is you know in the last call we briefly talked about the parent and our participation in pli so since the list is now final and out uh, if you can just provide some plans you know any anything if you can provide in detail our plans you know what segments we'll be looking at you know what are the capex or the investment and our plan yeah so we are actually we have uh, you know zeroed down on a particular product uh, category uh, so we are uh, right now doing the i mean market research uh, on that particular product so it's early days so i am not able to share more with you at this stage okay so it will be outside of the traditional right control product yes, okay yes. yeah. okay i'll come back in queue thank you thank you before we take our next question we'd like to remind participants to ask a question you may enter star and 1 The next question is from the line of Lakshmi Narayan from ICSA Prudential. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, now, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, we have done a good job in reducing the uh, uh, in the conversion cycle, where we we see that uh, that uh, you know we have actually reduced the inventory levels, etc. Right. So, um, so what is the plan forward? Can we maintain at these levels, uh, or you think uh, uh, that it, it, it will normalize to the pre, uh, uh, you know, 2018 levels? Rakesh, uh, me, if you're talking of uh, our working capital efficiency, you know, our efficiency of uh, you know inventory turns, uh, I I think that uh, we can improve even further. Uh, this is certainly. Uh, so we not end i think there is still scope for improvement and there are very uh, clear efforts going on and in some initiatives going on in terms of leveraging sap uh, to a much larger extent to give us you know better efficiencies in terms of uh, uh, inventory and scheduling yeah uh, good good and what kind of capex you intend to do for fi23 uh, fi23 will be mainly uh, it will be about uh, will be over 100 crores uh it would be in the range of uh, i would say 120 and uh, can you split that between uh, maintenance capex and uh, growth capex uh yes so uh, uh give and take we do roughly 20 to 30 or crores of maintenance capex every year and the remaining would be for strategic projects or for the bottling making of the capacity Got it, got it. And and uh, you touched upon freight expenses uh, in general, right? So you said there was an increase in freight expenses. So last year, uh, if you look at it, we incurred close to freight and forwarding around thirty crores. Uh, how that this year? Uh, you mean uh, what has been the freight expense this year? 
Yeah, yeah. Last year we incurred 29.7 crores. Ah, yeah. Okay. Other expenses. Uh, well, I don't have the figure offhand, but maybe we can come back to you. I'll just refer. Uh, Rishi is just referring to that. But yeah, it, I mean, just to say that freight has been, you know, increasing. Uh, I mean, uh, especially exports, both inbound and outbound, in, imports and exports outbound, uh, have been going up by four times and five times. Uh, but the good part is uh, the cycle is changing. We are seeing a bit of easing in uh, the freight uh, freight rates as well. We have seen almost a $500 per container reduction already. Uh, so we are hopeful that the freight rate should start uh, easing off. Uh, the fuel price also, you saw the latest government intervention. So with that, it should ease off. Uh, Rishi, you have the figure? So the figure is 40, 42 crores uh, for this year. Okay, from 30 to 42 crores. Okay. So on, you no, know, uh, last year we did uh, 1700 crores and this year we did 2300 crores. So. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, material uh, margin, you know, over a period of time, this is uh, at 22% at odd, right? Uh, and uh, it was, uh, you know, we exited last year at around 25%. So there has been a uh, drop in uh, material margin. So what is, uh, I mean, how fast you can claw back to at least 25% uh, material margin? Uh, Lakshmi, I think uh, uh, for sure, once the commodity trend starts reversing, we will see that happening. Uh, so um, difficult to say. I mean, as I said, all, I mean, it's not only me, but the entire industry expected price corrections to start in April 21, which never happened. Uh, uh, but the only thing is, if you see the early signs now, and also uh, there was an article some time back about you know the futures of steel, uh, which is which is expected to come back uh, to the earlier rates by the end of this year, and uh, the latest government intervention that happened a couple of days back, the fuel price reduction, the uh, container freight uh, reduction. So uh, we hope that things the cycle should start turning. Uh, I really cannot guess. Whether it will happen in Q1, Q2, very difficult. But uh, the margins will surely come back from them. Uh, second, uh, that is the market side, right? Now, second is what can we do internally? So again, we have uh, we just had our annual goal setting workshop uh, in the month of April, uh, where you know each of the team has been tasked with a clear focus on margin improvement, uh, both on uh, on the sales marketing side, that's also on the raw material or uh, you know the production teams uh, to improve uh, efficiencies. So, so we we will certainly uh, certainly see margins improving from uh, this quarter itself. And uh, actually, just to add to what what we've spoken, uh, even if we have a hundred percent recovery of every single commodity increase that we give it to the vendors. With that calculation, also there would be a two percent impact on the gross margin owing to the numerical impact, the mathematical or the denominator effect as we call it. So that also has to be factored into. Uh, this is an amount that can reverse only when you see a downward cycle. Uh, but I, I mean, I didn't get that part. Can you just elaborate a bit? So it's like this, you know, if, if let's say uh, my, my price is 100 rupees and my raw material is 70 percent, uh, and the raw material goes up from 70 to 80. Okay, so my RMC, and I get a 10 rupee, that 10 rupee increase, I get a compensation of it. So my price becomes 110. So 70% becomes 72.7%. You know, even if I get 100% compensation. Got it. Yeah, so okay. that's the effect that is playing out. Again, as I said, it's not only for us, it's for the industry. Uh, and yes, uh, the OEMs are uh, themselves under pressure. They have passed on several price increases. You know, it will start uh, turning unproductive if, on the demand side if, if it goes on like that. So we'll have to, uh, uh, after this year, we have decided that we, we should uh, pursue this uh, in a focused manner. Got it, got it. And, and one, um, uh, one strategy. Strategic question. So, if you look at five years back, uh, four years back, uh, when you when you thought the organization, you know, when you planned for a few things, uh, sitting in FI17, um, what are the things which have actually 
positively surprised you and you have actually gone ahead of your expectations and what which are the ones which did not meet your expectations and i mean leaving the covid aside right yeah. uh, so the last 5 years uh, how we have strengthened the company uh, better and uh, what is the plan forward now okay so uh, i mean several several points on that uh, one is uh, you know clearly you know our uh, our quality uh, offering to the customer has uh, improved significantly you know as i said while we we keep sharing awards uh, award is a manifestation of the confidence of the, the customer in us so you know that's why we keep uh, sharing the awards with all of you uh, so the quality image the quality perception has for sure uh, improved which which is so very important in the auto component industry uh, that is one second our technology capability has improved uh, in two wheelers and in four wheelers also it is you know significantly improved now that's how you see more and more business pipeline uh, coming through the third is uh, exports uh, we have unlocked some key marquee customers uh, which should help unlock you know many more you know we we took a lot of time in unlocking that Uh, but now with these marquee customers in our city we should uh, for sure improve that uh, even further so you know uh, then uh, the the other point is the overall customer relationship aspect uh, both from the company side and the group side has also improved uh, significantly at least with the key customers that has been another uh, good story uh, our focus on cash uh management has also i would say uh, you know been improving yes i we we can never forget the covid year but uh, even in covid year i think we were not so badly placed compared to the rest of the industry so these are uh, good points if you ask me even even the uh, i mean of course the ev uh, evs uh, sales ev market share in term, in, in two wheelers uh, is for sure a success story uh, that is one more thing uh so so if you ask me i mean these are some of the things that in you know, the top of the mind uh, which i would thought i i can share as the positives got it i mean and, and if you look at the ebitda margins that have, uh, have actually uh, uh you know declined gradually from 9.3% to 6% now right now uh, i think uh, this will you know claw back to uh, you know some better level whether it will take a year two years uh, because i mean how do you plan for the next 5 years yeah so uh, like you asked the question what has been a positive surprise the negative surprise has been this commodity uh, which is really really hit uh, again uh, all of us completely unforeseen kind of uh, situation uh, so it will take some time for us to uh, claw back to that you know we our target remains double digit uh, we are taking exercises internally to still push towards double, double digit uh, time frame is you know honestly uh, like very difficult to answer correct just one one last observation from my side see what has happened is uh, you know as a group we take 2% uh, fee on our revenues now from an inflation point of view what happens is that uh, the parent keeps getting uh, higher uh, uh, share right and that actually has a double impact for uh, for shareholders because the ebitda margin is uh, is going down and uh, the inflation is actually hitting right so uh, from a number point of view if you look at it the the fee to the parent has actually gone up 14% in the last 4 years from fi 19 to fi 22 the absolute dividend payout to minority shareholders have gone up only by 3.3% on a cumulative basis right how do you address this because uh, uh it is uh, it is actually creating difficulties for shareholders and uh, the, the inflation is good for the parent have you thought about it and what is how how, how you have you discussed in the board and in any views on that well uh, let's be difficult for me to take this uh, on the call but i have noted your point uh, but i can tell you that uh you know in terms of uh, the group there has been you know like the hero order that i just mentioned you know it's uh, i would say it's uh, mostly come from our group support uh similarly there are several other business connections that we make the in- improvement in share in maruti is also to a, while the company has performed but you know there are so many players there are four players they have so this is where you know the group support uh, for sure counts uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I I completely agree on the group thing because that's uh, that group has to be compensated. The only thing is that instead of as a percentage of revenue, if we can actually think about percentage of the PPP, then the interests are much better aligned. Uh, Lakshmi, I noted your point. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any participant who wishes to ask a question may enter star in one. The next question is from the line of Priya Ranjan from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so my question is, I mean, in terms of the price recovery uh, or in terms of the inflation, how much we have got the inflation benefit in terms of top line and how much is under recovery in terms of commodity pass through is still in the numbers? For the full year, uh, you know, uh, eight, eight and a half percent is on account of the commodity. Uh, and the remaining would be volume. Uh, on account of rec uh, recovery percentage, we are upwards of 85%, uh, including all the segments. Okay. So, uh, but recovery, can recovery go beyond 90% or is mostly it's fixed, uh, gets at around 90% level? The answer to you is uh, yes, it can go up. Uh, one part of uh, the business, which is 13%, is aftermarket. There, uh, such kind of commodity indexation is difficult because it is also dependent upon what the competition is doing with regards to the price. Second is, with regards to some of the segments which have got a longer settlement cycle, we are to, uh, we cannot accrue in the books the impact which we will go get, gonna get in the next quarter or in some cases in the next half year. Uh, in cases of export also, the settlement cycles are longer than six months. So there also there is a timing lag so that uh, considering if I remove the lag part of it, certainly it can go above 90%. Okay, got it. And coming back to the growth aspect, so now, I mean, this year was also, uh, as you mentioned, I mean, Manoj mentioned about two months of impact in, in terms of COVID and our higher market share in two-wheeler EV part. Uh, so how should we look at the growth? Because... Uh, uh, the last year growth was also pretty decent, even if I remove the uh, the commodity benefit in the top line. And the secondly, on the uh, what will be the impact of Russia in the in terms of our export growth? Will our export be broadly flattest this year, or uh, how should we look at it? Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, uh, the growth for this year. I mean, I can only tell you. Uh, in terms of the, the industry side, uh, we are looking at the passenger car growth of almost uh, 10% and commercial vehicle growth of almost 20-25% uh, you know, is what we are looking at. But two-wheelers, uh, it's a flat uh, kind of scenario we are we are uh, you know, kind of factoring in. Uh, I think uh, while, as I said, there was some optimism, but I'm still a little doubtful about whether the demand will improve. Two wheelers, I mean, electric two wheelers, yes, the growth story I did already share. I mean, we had a 400% growth last year. I don't see why it should not be the same this year, where our market share is better. So that is that is what that, that is where it stands. Aftermarket is uh, quite strong. And, uh, I think the growth there will should definitely continue in 20% in, uh, uh, region. Uh, exports, uh, unfortunately, uh, it will actually be a degrowth because we had a good order for Volkswagen and Russia and uh, to be honest I don't see that changing for at least you know Q1 and Q2. Mm -hmm. Understood, understood. And in terms of sir, our market share in uh, four-wheeler, I mean we have got many new wins in last say one, one, two years. So how should we look at market share in the four-wheeler, I mean the passenger car side? Uh, we were, you know, uh, hovering around 20% earlier. Now it's already gone to 23%, and uh, and I think we can uh, definitely uh, get this up to uh, in in the sh in the next three to four years. This can uh, definitely go more towards 28%. Okay, got it. And uh, lately, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, movement in the railway side. So. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, wagon procurement, new new types of wagon, etc. So, I mean, I, as I mean, I think uh, our market share in, even in railway is very pretty pretty significant. So, uh, what is our sense in that segment growth? Maybe for the next one or two years. Uh, 
Yes, the tenders are yet to come, but uh, yeah, I mean there has been news that you know they're adding 4,300 coaches of LHBs, etc. So uh, yeah, I mean last last two years have been pretty bad for railways. I mean the, the figures have been flat actually or negative. Uh, so this year, uh, if those plans actually converted to tenders, we, we will certainly see a growth in railways. Uh, we'll have to wait and watch for that. Mm -hmm. And in terms of lastly, on the in terms of localization, I I think last two three years a part of the capex has been going into in terms of localization. So, but we are not able to see that benefit in terms of the gross margin or so. Uh, why do you think? I mean, uh, is it something? Uh, there is a lead lag impact in that, or what's your sense on that? Look, we've got these projects of localization, which we classify under the Code 90 program, on a year basis, has given us uh, the results that we have desired. Having said that, uh, there are other factors which have also contributed in terms of increasing the the RMC percentage. Uh, to give you a ballpark number, 0. 0.5 to 0.9% has been the benefit which we have drived out of these programs. Okay, got it. All the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any participant who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one. Our next question is from the line of Ankit Madhuri from HDFC Security. Please go ahead. Hello. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just on the EV, uh, two-wheeler EV outlook, uh, I just want to check with you, while we have seen a lot of uh, news flow around the capacity ramp up from players, we, all, we are also hearing uh, they are facing chip shortage issue, which, which are, uh, you know, hindering the ramp up per se. And also the recent fire incidents uh, could have sort of hampered the momentum. So if you could talk about uh, how you are seeing this growth rate in two-wheeler EVs uh, going forward, uh, uh, that would be uh, useful, uh, for, of course, for you and for the industry uh, both. Yeah, so uh, I mean, yes, there have been these fire incidents that have happened, uh, but if you see even uh, even the last month, let's say April, and even the way May is going, uh, I think people have uh, kind of accepted that uh, and moved on. I don't think you know because the the, pro the pro proposal of EV is uh, very compulsive. You know, the the payback is really solid. Uh, Especially if the fuel price is going higher, you know you recover your uh, initial higher vehicle cost. If you look at the total cost of ownership in in I think two and a half years yeah, at the current uh, fuel rates. Uh, so, the prop, I mean it's very compulsive to switch over to EV. Uh, any new thing is going to have issues. So we are seeing those fires. Some some areas being uh, blown. I must say uh, a bit out of uh, proportion as well. Uh, so I don't see. That impact, yes, the positive is uh, that the two-wheeler EV makers have taken this and improved their quality. Uh, they're working on improving their uh, quality and technology. So that's the positive. I don't see that affecting in a big way. Uh, I still believe, I mean, that 50,000 per month can easily go to uh, 100,000 per month in this year itself, uh, for sure. Uh, so by the end of the year, the two-wheelers will be close to, in, in the range of, 8 lakh to 10, 10 lakh, I mean, closing to a million, a million uh, two-wheelers. I'm talking about registered. Unregistered is something, you know, which we don't have the figures. So, but approximately the, the ratio is, uh, now there are more registered. So ratio is, I would say, 50-50 uh, for both. And uh, as regards Gabriel, I already told you our uh, engagement is going stronger uh, uh, from, let's say, Aether, Ola, Okinawa, Ampere, I mean, all these players, the indication that we have for the future months is quite uh, quite good uh, and increasing. Uh, so all reason to believe that this 400% growth last year will get repeated this year as well. Understood. So, so basically, uh, you're not seeing any chip shortages uh, per se uh, you, uh, if for this category? Talk about, talk about chip shortages. Chip shortages are hitting them, uh, but they have, I mean, they have so far managed. Uh, I think they should. And, and the chip uh, issue also is getting, I mean, it's not behind us uh, for sure, but it's getting, uh, you know, eased to some extent. So I don't see chip shortages, uh, you know, affecting them in a big way because the overall volumes are still still not very big, uh, Ankit. So sure. All, all that we say is it's, it's only, even if I say 400% growth, it's 1 million compared to, you know, 50, 
15 16 million for IC engines so I, I don't see a major issue there understood and and on the PV ramp up part uh, again uh, we have been hearing a lot of order book a backlog again because of chip shortages how are you seeing the industry cope up with the chip shortage issue at the moment yeah it uh, I mean, as per industry, it says that uh, it will go on for you know the first half of this year for sure. Uh, but I mean, there'll be no degrowth. Uh, as I said, the 10% increase in TV market is what is the expectation of the industry. Uh, I think it's. I think we remain firm on that. Understood. And uh, coming to the uh, new uh, order wins in Maruti uh, specifically, uh, you talked about three new platforms. Now, are these new platforms are, or these are upgrades? Uh, because uh, we have typically not seen Maruti launch three products in one uh, year per se uh, before this. So, and, and would these be, and could you specify any specific categories, would these all be in utility vehicles? Right. So, one is a new platform, uh, which is YWD or the Maruti Jimny. Uh, you know, which is uh, doing quite well uh, overseas. So this is this completely new. Uh, you can always say that it's replacing Gypsy, but Gypsy is long gone. So it's, sure. it's a new platform completely. Uh, then uh, Y0, the other two are uh, replacements, yes. One is a new Brezza, and the other is a new, uh, the new Alto. The new Alto. Understood. Okay. Okay. Uh, and just on the finally on the two wheeler uh, part, when you talked about uh, flat growth, uh, so uh, again, uh, given that we are we have seen uh, three years of a decline in two wheelers, and even last year, if you recall, you know, uh, we had as you rightly pointed out, we had a COVID hit month, you know, so the base was also pretty low. Despite that, you still think uh, it will only be a flattish kind of a growth even this year. Um. Yes, uh, uh, because some of it is going to get into, uh, going to flow into the EV segment. Uh, so EV segment is, as I said, the growth is a number is small, but the growth is pretty high. So that uh, this, the metro scooter demand will get shifted here. In fact, we are seeing that play out in the rural segment as well. But overall, uh, you know, I still see a flattish kind of figure. Uh, monsoon, as you know, is I mean the early indications are not not very good while it's predicted to be normal but monsoon is uh, already deficient so we'll have to wait and watch difficult to guess but i would say flat is a better better guess to have understood sir thank you so much thanks and all the best thank you thank you anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one next question is from the line of Sriman Tudoria, an individual investor please go ahead uh, yeah, good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm sorry uh, to interrupt, Mr. Dodoria. I think you're on a speaker mode. Can you please switch it to handset and speak? Uh, yeah, is it better now? Yeah, much better. Right, okay. A couple of questions. Uh, see, firstly, you know, with the investments, uh, you know, that were done in the last financial year, 22, and, you know, that have been planned uh, in 23, uh, what would be the uh, capacity increase uh, that we are looking uh, across segments? Uh, that's that's the first question. Okay, so the capacity increase, uh, you know, uh, which we have done, uh, as I said, we have got these new orders from Maruti Suzuki. So some of mm -hmm. it is already, you know, done last year, and some is uh, will be done in in this 22-23. Uh, uh, this will take care of that uh, that additional, uh, you know, volumes that we have got. For uh, mm -hmm. for Maruti Suzuki in two wheeler side, the, I mean mainly the EV plus the new Hero order, Hero electric order that uh, I already mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. Both uh, Ola put, you know, uh, pushing their numbers, so that will obviously we we are already invested, but uh, yes, we may have to do a bit of deep bottlenecking additionally. Right, and, right. But but. Uh, in addition to capacity, of course, one important thing that we are you've done is investing in technology. Uh, so you know, which which is not directly capacity, but in terms of our capability. Uh, so we have invest we have invested in the R&D center. We are investing in uh, developing our own electronic suspension. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's uh, that program is already underway. 
Okay, but but the, with with the investments uh, uh, that has been done, uh, is, is there a number which you could share? You know, say X units uh, was the capacity say last year, and this will become you know say so much uh, at the end of next financial year. Uh, number of units, you uh, Okay, I don't have an answer right now for that, but uh, uh, Srimad, maybe I will revert back to you on that. It's roughly 40 sure. million, uh, but in terms of exact, uh, you know, with these additional investments, uh, we'll have to get back to you. Okay, in, in this context, wanted to understand uh, at, at present what utilization levels we are running at? Yeah, uh, so uh, it's, it's different uh, if you. If you Across segments, uh, yeah. I mean, look at uh, two wheeler. Uh, that figure would be yeah. For uh, two wheeler, it's about sixty five percent. Passenger car, it's what put together would would be. Uh, same same range, 65. Uh, commercial vehicle would be a little higher, uh, more at 70 percent. Okay, so the two wheeler 65 includes the electric vehicles. Yeah, yeah. So there is right. a there is a mix, you know, in terms of uh, let's say one plant is running at you know actually maybe 80 80 percent plus. Uh, there's one plant which is running at 50 percent. So you know I'm just talking on a mixed basis. Yeah, understood. Fair enough. Uh, lastly, uh, if you could also share, you know, uh, you know, while the top line includes an impact of the uh, the inflation in the commodity, so uh, what would be the volume that was sold in, say, the full year FI22, uh, and how does it compare with uh, 20 and 21? If you have that number. Uh, uh, again, as I said on the volumes, uh, we we'll revert back to you, uh, but. Oh. Uh, if you look at the growth, uh, like Rishi had mentioned, uh, you know there's about eight to nine percent of commodity increase in the top line. So you just have to knock off eight to nine percent. You know the rest is volume growth, more, more or less. Okay. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sashank Kanoria from ICS Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Uh, so there was some recent media articles mentioning Alam Group looking at hundred to one fifty dollars million dollars of investment um, for. Mr. Kanodia, could you use your handset or if you're, uh, I mean, on your handset and speak? We can't hear you clearly. Yeah, is it better now? Yeah. Yeah. So recently there was some media articles uh, mentioning Alam Group investment, uh, planning investment of hundred to one fifty million dollars for EV component. So will Gable have any role to play in that domain? So this is uh, this is uh, mainly through you know the motor. I mean we have uh, formed a JV with uh, Mando, uh, but it's an un majority on JV. Uh, currently they are making uh, you know they are into two wheeler motors, uh, which will will extend to even four wheeler motors, uh, motors and controllers. So that's already started. They have started supplying SOP. Uh, there are some additional uh, additional products uh, also in terms of the HMI or the uh, human machine interface, uh, the, the, the clusters for two wheelers, uh, chargers for two wheelers. So we are exploring, we are in, in fact even charging infrastructure is part of it. So it's being explored at the group level. Uh, I mean, as of now, uh, I mean, Gabriel is not a part of it, uh, but we can't, uh, I mean, uh, what I, I mean, we can't dismiss it either. Mando is the same venture firm where we supply the shock absorbers to the Quinton OEMs, right? The Hyundai and Kia. That's right. So Mando is mainly a brakes and electronic electric power steering supplier, and also they supply ADAS uh, to most of the OEMs in India. Uh, so yeah, they do supply shock absorbers to Hyundai and Kia. And we make the inner tubes for them, right? Yeah. Uh, pardon? We make the inner aluminium tubes for them, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, the piston rods. And secondly, sir, we would also raise a similar uh, concern regarding the royalty and the legal fee that we pay to the group level. So uh, it might be roughly 2% of the top line, but if you consider the pack level, it's roughly half the part of what you are clocking annually. I think uh, we have raised a similar concern with the IR team, but uh, I'm not very sure whether it is testable to you or not. But I think there, is a, uh, there should be a concept within if you can rethink about it. Uh, 
Okay, Chirang, uh, noted as I said, uh, you noted that. Even Maruti, if you might have noticed, the royalty is on the decline side. So, the Maruti doesn't pay the same royalty on the same fagana, which was launched 20 years back. So, I think there is a strong case for you to uh, make an addition. Last year, on the five, uh, your vision 2025, uh, any inorganic acquisitions that you've zeroed upon or uh, any size or any, any color you can share to be in the top five? Yes, yes. so that uh, Shashank we are pursuing. In fact, we we did uh, in fact we did visit one of one one company as well, but unfortunately, uh, you know the the company was uh, let's say not up to the mark in terms of compliance standards, and you know uh, we have we have a certain uh, way we do business, uh, and we want uh, compromise on certain aspects. So we so we had to uh, reject that target, but. Uh, uh, we are at, at the moment also evaluating a couple of other opportunities, so it goes on. I think uh, the effort is definitely on. But uh, for me, uh, do you think at top five, we have to have a billion dollar of seed, right? That is what you can join Yes, yes, yes. If you translate that into numbers, it should be around that figure, yeah. Thank you so much, and be sure. Thank you, Vishen. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is a follow up from the line of Priya Ranjan from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Sure. Uh, just one thing, I mean, in, ter in terms of our top line or even within the two-wheeler segment, how much is the revenue now coming from the electric side, overall or two-wheeler, whichever way you want to say? Yeah, so, uh, the number is still uh, still small, uh, but I can just give you a approximate, uh, you know, in terms of uh, percentage uh, or the, the volume, it should be... It's just two to three percent. It's still very low. Okay. And uh, just another thing is on the uh, the the uh, uh, tax rate. I mean, uh, uh, why we are paying still higher tax rate? Are we not moving to twenty five percent rate tax rate? So, uh, I'll take that question. Uh, so basically, is we have moved into the regime of twenty five percent. Uh, once you have the full set of financials, you can see the tax uh, working as well into it. So what happened is that there was an impact of a deferred revenue uh, from the previous year to the to a close of 41 million, uh, which has resulted into the current tax rate being higher, uh, both as compared to previous year as well as the 25 percent that we are supposed to have an effective tax rate for. Okay. Got it. And just, I mean, just one was, I mean, uh, we are also the, one of the large shareholders, so we we would also like to have uh, the same concern around uh, royalty part, so which is because the commodity benefit is actually getting transferred in terms of a higher royalty. So, uh, would request you to consider and um, have a yeah. detailed discussion on that within the group. Thanks, uh, Priya. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Lakshmi Narayan from ICSA Prudential. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks again. Um, so uh, when you look at uh, these, some of the uh, uh, clients in the EV space, uh, their balance sheets are, uh, are not good. I mean, they are in the mode of funding, right? So how do you ensure that uh, uh, when you set up a capacity, you, you don't risk yourself by committing more? And uh, you know whether it you know it's so whether it is interoperable that what you supply for the electric vehicle uh, in case for some reason they they just uh, go kaput right uh, whether uh, you can actually use it for others and how how are you thinking about this particular risk? Yeah, so uh, valid points. So what we do in terms of you know we have we have an elaborate process because you know there are uh, as uh, I mean I, I mean you. There are about uh, 300 plus, or in fact, even 400 uh, registered EV companies, EV two-wheeler companies, mainly two-wheeler and three-wheeler. So many of them will finally, like you said, go kaput. So we have a, we have a process by which we, uh, you know, before we uh, quote or before we engage with the customer, we do a kind of a, you know, due diligence internally to see, you know, what is uh, what is the reputation, what is the pedigree, what is the funding pattern. Uh, so we do that. And second is uh, uh, so sometimes we actually you know regret uh, not going ahead with them. Uh, the second point is we recover the development cost and uh, you know the engineering cost from these people uh, so that 
to at least you know on cost front if things don't go well we have recovered our cost uh, which we spent on developing and uh, developing the uh, product uh, and also uh, we do take any specific investments uh, as a compensation from them uh, and in case uh, in, in the worst case if they don't uh, you know if, if they fold up or something uh, you know fortunately these lines and these investments are completely fungible uh, other than the specific tooling that I need for the casting it's, uh, which is compensated from the customer I can use practically everything to uh, to cater to some other customer thank you sir so uh, just to say that the risk is uh, you know quite low on that as far as we are concerned okay Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so once again, thank you all. Uh, uh, clearly could see uh, you know, a lot of interest uh, in terms of, of course, how do we get back our margins, which clearly is on the top of our agenda. Uh, and, and yes, a lot of interest on the TV side. Uh, and and uh, I can only say uh, with, with this new additional hero electric order, uh, you know, our position has been strengthened further, and uh, we will continue to push on this front while not uh, ever removing our focus on our existing legacy customers. Uh, so that that remains. Uh, yes, uh, uh, let's hope this year is you know at least free from uh, COVID and that all of us are safe, uh, and we don't have any setbacks on that front. And uh, hoping that the commodity cycle also starts turning the other way. So that we have some, uh, you know, better numbers going forward. Uh, uh, irrespective of that, we we will continue pushing our efficiencies. And uh, thanks for all your inputs and suggestions. Uh, on some cases, we have to revert back to you, which we will. Uh, so thank you, and uh, all the very best, and uh, stay safe. Thank you, members of the management. On behalf of Gabriel India, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.